<clears throat> all right back to you again um coming to you with a inexpensive squirrel option um and of course my premise of this video is not to review the gun this is going to be a project gun for me um i just picked it up on the used market for two and a quarter um this is the savage fvsr in 22 um long rifle it's the mark ii version accu trigger oversized bolt handle uh thicker fluted barrel threaded at the end um i i picked this up to kind of be a beater squirrel rifle if the weather's not good outside uh if it's uh just not pleasant right around in the truck kind of uh, you know i'm not so worried about this one now like i am my cz 452 americans dinging them banging them things like that this is where that rifle is going to uh, hold a role for me um and i'm putting it in front of the camera right now because black's not a natural color it's not uh, natural in a squirrel hunting environment uh easier to find for me if i lay it down somewhere but uh i try to keep my rifle really close to me what i'm going to do is i'm going to take you through the process of degreasing this whole rifle taking it apart stripping it i'll we'll try to put all this in one video and i'm going to camo this gun now, i don't know yet if i'm going to do a natural uh using foliage outside and naturally uh camoing the gun or if i'm going to uh sponge dab it and and do it that way don't know yet going to figure it out as we go and work it out as we go i've picked up a couple of items to degrease with some purple power and try that out um i was a little afraid that uh a non-chlorinated brake cleaner would um mar the synthetic stock uh, i'm not sure about that i'm gonna test it on a little area to see and if it does happen then the purple power will definitely take care of the rest of it now i do have black um matte camo but i'm going to use rust-oleum's it's kind of difficult to find krylon around here but rust-oleum's matte um this is a khaki there's a kind of dark brown green color that i'm going to use it may be hard to show up and it may not show up on camera and uh it's like a dark green brown and then i've got an od green that I've painted one of my clear ridge scopes with. I'm going to try it out. And I'm also at the very end, I was able to find a clear coat, a matte finish clear coat, and just clear coat my work so that it'll be less flaking off. A whole lot cheaper than a Dura coat job. Hope it works out. I mean, we're only talking a $250 gun here. Uh, so I'm not real concerned if I screw things up, but I'm going to tape it up, degrease it. Get everything done like i want to and paint the pieces and parts you also notice the uh, gun has no sights on it it's uh got a picatinny rail for scope it's only made for scope which is fine on me i just assume you use optics um anyway i'll be getting back with you as we go through the video and showing you step-by-step -step process okay i'm taking just a little bit of this purple power spray that um i'm using and just spraying it on a blue shop towel and just applying it to the out, outside of the stock just to knock any grease, anything like that, off of the stock so that I have a good surface area for adhesion from the spray paint. And that's basically all I'm going to do to the stock. And I'm also going to go ahead and do that to the action and get it working. It appears that this purple power is not having any type of effect on... Um, the synthetic stock so i'm going to go ahead and continue to use it. it seems to be working just fine okay i've put a little bit of this remington action cleaner on the uh barrel assembly where i'm on run paint um i don't know if you can tell on the camera but this is a pretty rough bluing job it's kind of gritty to the feel which is good that's going to mean that the uh paint job is going to stick real well so just something to think about if you're planning on doing this if it's got a real shiny finish blued finish uh, you may have to be more aggressive with the degreaser than uh, on a job like this it's uh appears to be like it's gonna adhere well anyway um just cleaned it off with a little bit of that action degreaser and uh gonna get ready to tape up so we can get ready and paint Okay, so I'm working on taping up my trigger group here. You see I'm 
pretty much almost done. I just got to apply this last piece and get it right where I want it so I can paint the barrel and make sure the lines come out like I want them. Also got to get down there and get that last little bit of trigger. You can see on the other side too, I've shoved some blue shop towel inside action area there. I don't want any of that getting paint on it down in it. Now I gotta tape up the bolt. I've never done this. I have seen it done I've watched some reviews and I have gotten up the courage to take my first shot at it hopefully this video will help somebody else out that's thinking about doing it themselves but I'm basically gonna just wrap the bolt in the painters tape and I'm gonna make sure I cut out right around my bolt handle there so that my bolt handle is camoed. Anyway, I will be back with you soon, probably in the painting process. Okay, I'm gonna base coat this uh, Savage back here with um, a little bit of my khaki color to start with, and then we're gonna work from there um, as we progress in the camouflage job. I'm thinking that I'm probably going to do the sponge project on it. Just dab a little bit on it at a time and I'll show how that's doing. I um, picked that up from a guy named Dorton on uh, Carolina Shooter Club. Um, looked like a good technique. I'm going to see if I can't do it. Um, anyway, start base coat. I'm going to hold back from a distance and just hit it with a little burst. It's certainly not ideal conditions for for doing this today is pretty doggone humid. Looks like it's sticking pretty good. I don't mind if a little bit of that black from the factory shows through. I'll actually add a little bit of shadow. Now to get this barrel to whirl.
weird about the underside of this, trying to get it painted so that it doesn't show black when it's in the stock. I'll be back all right now that the uh, gun is all khaki of course it's off camera right now I'm gonna run some of my darker choice uh, spray paint over my pattern choices down here on this white cardboard just to get an idea of what it's gonna look like when I start patterning it see whether I like it or not before it actually goes on the rifle if I can get them to hold still That's the problem with kind of tough to get them to hold still for you. I'm curious how these cedars are going to do. I kind of like the way they look. Alright, that don't look bad. Kind of like that pattern. Oh yeah, that looks real nice. Mm. I guess this one's just got a little bit too much. It doesn't lay flat enough. A Emerald Arborvita would be great if I could get my hands on one of those. Mm. Sweet gum doesn't look bad. And then I got some Wisteria vine over here, of course. That was moving around a little bit. Not bad, but at least I got an idea of what it looks like before I put it on. I really like this. I could always go with the sweet gum. It's going to leave big patterns of the khaki on there. But I think I'm going to like this pattern for later on in the project. All right, just going to show that before All I right, get on here. Right. goes. See how it works. I'm going to spray from a little bit more of a distance this time. already moving on me a little bit and I can darken it up as I go I don't want it too dark yet I mean, that's probably lighter than I want it. Huh? Got a little bit. I like that. I just wish I had more of it. I left a big void. Hmm. You never know till you try this stuff. I think I'm liking this smaller bipinate leaf structure right now better than I like the bigger leaf structure. Something a little bit on the small side. I think that's how I'll go. Let's see what we can do right here. Now that's laying on there nice. It's okay. Like I said, you never know till you try. I'm going to keep playing with it, keep progressing through it. We go for the other side of the rifle, Let's see what we can do here. A little bit of ragweed in there this time.
see what we got here. Well, that didn't do what I wanted it to do. I guess that needs to be flush up against the stock. I like that. That's more so what I'm looking for. There's a little bit of it, a little bit of that grainage. Too bad. Ragweed looks nice. Not so sure what this is, but it, it lays a nice pattern. If I could just get this to show up a little bit better. Right We're going to give her a run in OD green now and see what happens. It's probably the color I should have picked first. I'm more of a fan of this characteristic for around here, although in the wintertime, dead of winter, brown seems to be the color. See a little bit of depth of color. Still bringing a little bit of khaki out of that background, yeah. I'm liking that. But well, that didn't do a whole lot. Yep, that's not looking bad right there. I can always add a little more khaki if I think enough or too much of it's gone. Looks kind of interesting there, but that's that's the way one of these projects is supposed to be. It's supposed to be interesting. I can work at it as long as I want to get it where I want it. I can always backtrack. Kind of looks good. I'm thinking I'm going to khaki some of this area back up, or I'm going to do something with some type of foliage in this area. I don't really like the way it looks. a little bit better. Now to get that bolt handle a little bit of color. Yeah. Something kind of like that. Gotta go something kind of small there. I still want that khaki coming through. But I also want some type of pattern on anywhere that it's too dark for me. I'm just gonna come back with this piece right here, kind of lightly dust a little bit of khaki over it. See if I can't pick up that foliage. That's exactly what I'm looking for. That right there. So you always come back with your lighter colors and uh, make things the way you want them. You can certainly see the contrast from the other side how much that developed just with the OD green this side certainly needs a little bit more work the problem is with this is getting those leaf structures to stay still while you're spraying and I don't know that there's any easy way to make that happen Okay. Need something that's a little more dense. Maybe along the lines of a little more foliage so that not so much paint gets through. Yeah, something like that. ragweed right there. Good 
thing about this is you can always start over. You can always come back. I like that. I like something that stands out a little bit like that, but also adds a little bit of break up. Yep. That's working. Maybe my problem before was I didn't have enough foliage riding on the gun. this side is starting to come to life. Let's see what we got back here. Yeah. Now I can come in, add a little bit of this just to break those lines up. There. And I'm spraying a little bit too close. Yeah, a little bit of break up. guys it's coming together all right well here's what we look like right now this is where I'm on leave my finished product at not each side is the same I like the way it breaks up looks pretty good if I had something to do over again that I'd have done different I'd have probably started with a darker base since we have darker colors around here and then added my lighting shadow work like with the uh, cedar tree. I would have added that and made sure the darkness would come out in what the cedar tree was covering from the paint. We should go top side too. I didn't focus real hard on the top side. I just give it some bigger leaf, leaf structure. Kind of the same thing for the bottom. Now it's going to be time to clear coat. Okay, I'm going to add Krylon's matte finish clear coat to the rifle and uh, hopefully secure that paint job's existence. A little bit of spray left to right. It's supposed to come out matte color, not be glossy. Make sure I get all my areas really well. Make sure and spray around all the obstacles. Make sure I'm getting all the important parts. Of course, it also says that you don't see on the first chance and you don't like the way it come out to apply it to the coat. Just want to ensure that this one stays like I make it. All right, finished project here. Um, you can tell it's smoking hot out here in August. Um, so this is what we're looking like. Uh, you can see, I don't know if the camera's going to be able to depict it or not, but um, that clear coat tends to be a little bit on the white side. So if you don't want to really tan things up, you don't want to add too much. I may have added a little bit too much back here, but it seems to still be working for me. I'll make sure to lighten the camera capture at all. I didn't mess with the magazine as far as camoing it out. 
I may in the future. I didn't really mess with anything on the front of the muzzle end. If it got a little bit of um, dusting, I won't worry about it. If you look at the top side. Bow handle turned out pretty good, but I'm interested to see uh, how much wear it's going to take to wear the paint job off of that bolt handle. So there's your finished project of the Savage FVSR and 22 long rifle. Uh, it went from black to khaki to now in its home state color of camo. Beautiful nail job I got there too. Hopefully I'll put it in the squirrel woods this year too. I just got to put some glass on top of it. Maybe my Mueller APT that I got sitting around may end up on top of it, but uh, it's sure to get a camo job too. This one ought to be accurate. The guy I bought it from said it was, so I'm going to trust that. I'll fire a few different types of ammunition in it, see what I can find that it likes, and go from there. That's a Savage FVSR. Now camoed up, what I'm going to call or refer to as my beater or bad weather rifle. Thanks for checking it out, guys.